With no cure and frightening potential birth defects, fears over the Zika virus in America have people changing travel plans, and Florida officials are now scrambling to kill mosquitoes before the virus spreads. In one Miami neighborhood, there are 16 cases. That neighborhood now declared a hot zone. Tonight on Fox, a Zika special and an exclusive look at how the earliest victims in the U.S. are dealing with what is clearly a mysterious disease. Her little girl made news after being the first baby born in the continental U.S. with microcephaly linked to the Zika virus. The baby that we delivered yesterday with microcephaly, she probably was bitten in the first trimester of pregnancy, and she never thought that mosquito bite is going to lead to the child being affected. As you saw, our very own Dr. Manny Alvarez treated the mother of that baby, and the baby as well. He joins us now from New York. Uh, Dr. Manny, we'll get to Zika in a minute. First, an update on this little girl. Uh, you saw from the picture, it was pretty clear she had some severe birth defects. Fair to say this little girl's got a rough road ahead of her? Oh, absolutely. This is a lifelong uh, problem. You know, when you have microcephaly, basically what you have, you have a malformation of the brain uh, where you have now severe, severe neurological deficits for life. And this is a child that's going to need intensive care monitoring and, and it's going to have a, an incredible challenging life. There is so much fear about Zika and there's precious little information. How much do we know, number one, about the virus itself, but number two, this correlation versus causation of birth defects? Well, every day we're beginning to uh, find out new things about the virus. Uh, what I can tell you is that the correlation between getting exposed, being pregnant, getting bitten in the first or second trimester of pregnancy has a very a strong link of developing neurological uh, sequelae like microcephaly, like you just uh, seen in the, in the video. Uh, so that's a fact, and you know we have hundreds of kids ha that have been born in, in South America, Central America, uh, where this is now a problem. Uh, we also are finding out uh, that there is indirect evidence that in adults uh, that uh, have a predisposition, uh, when they get exposed to Zika, they could theoretically develop some neurological problems like Guillain Barre. So this is a story that continues to evolve. Um, you know, the virus, the Zika virus, is very toxic to the uh, to to the neurological tissue, if you will. And there's now also anecdotes that even babies that do not have the anatomical malformation, if they get exposed in utero, they could also have seizure disorders out there. You, they're you born. said you so said the word you said, said the word correlation. Have we gotten to causation yet? Have we gotten to the point where we know that if a mother has Zika or is bitten by a Zika mosquito, her baby is going to be affected, or perhaps even her baby a long time from now could be affected? Well, there's causation for sure. Uh, however, uh, remember, when you get into viral diseases, and I don't want to get too medically complex here, it doesn't necessarily follow that there's enough virus transmission into the unborn to, to cause it harm. So uh, the, the causation is there. We, we're now sure that this Zika virus is the culprit, if you will, of microcephaly in some of these kids. Would as a physician, would you say to any young woman, certainly a young mother, but young women of childbearing age, are we at the point where they should be avoiding Florida, they should be avoiding states that have big mosquito populations right now? Well, look, if you, if you notice what the CDC has been saying right from the very beginning, the first thing, the only line of, of, of is, uh, that we have right now is prevention. Prevention of exposure means if you're pregnant or you're thinking of getting pregnant or if your significant other is in those areas and is coming back, uh, abstain from sex. In other words, uh, prevention is key. Don't put yourself at harm's way going to areas that are hot. Uh, when it comes to Zika transmission. So that's number one. The second phase now that we're getting very aggressive on is in mosquito control. And right now that war is not even barely began to be won. And the third phase, which is, is what a lot of scientists are working on, is we need a vaccine. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to eliminate this problem, the only thing that will work is a vaccine. The one thing that we've been hearing, it's almost sci-fi like, this idea of being able to create genetically modified mosquitoes so that when they breed, they're sterile, therefore it sort of ends the mosquito population or its ability to procreate. Is that the way to go? Is the spraying we're seeing in Miami the way to go? What, what, what's, what's the solution here? 
Well, listen, uh, I mean, I'm sure mosquito experts have a lot of knowledge in how to control the mosquito population, but, but here's the skinny. The, 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 the modified, genetically modified mosquitoes is something that is relatively new. It has never been tried before. Uh, the FDA looked into it, to it and, uh, you know, they say it's okay. Uh, there's a lot of criticisms about, uh, you know, altering the genetic material of something that is natural like mosquitoes, but that seems to be one way to go about it. The spraying has to be, con you know, continuous, but, you know, when you... you we just had the news report with all the rain in Florida. No matter how much you spray, you get one of those rainstorms, you get an inch of rain. All, that, all those chemicals go by the wayside. So you have to sort of camp, you know, campaign constantly in, 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 in eradicating right. the mosquitoes uh, and, and wait until the wintertime when everything begins to subside and there's cooler temperatures in Florida and the panhandle in the, and in the southern part of the United States so that you can catch up, if you will, in eradicating at least the batch and see what happens next summer. But in the meantime, yeah. Time, we do have to work on vaccines. Very quickly here, you say the word vaccine. Something we have, we're working on a vaccine for a well as well is Ebola. Uh, about 18 months ago, there was the huge Ebola scare. We were all going to die from Ebola. Everything was crazy about Ebola. Is this another Ebola that's going to turn out to be nothing, or is this real? No, no, this is real and Ebola is real. You know, w what happened in the Ebola epidemic, Ebola is still out there. Uh, we just not seen, spur you know, come out in, in large numbers anymore. We still don't have an Ebola vaccine after hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars put into that kind of work. And that's an ongoing problem. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of time before we may have another Ebola outbreak. However, I think the health authorities down in, in, in Africa are kind of keeping things in check. And the same thing with, with the Zika virus. This this is a real, real, real problem, and, uh, and it's a problem that is much broader, if you will, because it's such a pandemic. It goes all the way to the southern cone of the America, Central America, and now right. North America. Well, so this is a much bigger problem. Well, bigger problem and incredibly scary, uh, devastating, you might say, effects of it. Uh, Dr. Alvarez, appreciate your insights and analysis today. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. And there are going to be a special tonight you don't want to miss, hosted by Trace Gallagher, Fighting Zika, Fox News reporting at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight.